I mean, like, Hasmara, can I kiss you? I would describe this film as lesbian hot chocolate. Yum. I put it in my mouth. No. Thanks for watching and goodbye. The gloves, the photography, the holiday season. It's Carol, but it's Hallmarkified. It's also Hallmark's first ever lesbian holiday romance film. Ha ha ha. They have featured lesbian activity in their films before. In Every Time a Bell Rings and Love Classified. AKA their apologies to the lesbian community for pulling an advert from their channel just because it featured two brides kissing. One million mums put in a complaint and I want to kiss all one million of those mums. I, I do. It's just impossible for me to be angry at homophobic women. It just turns me on too much. I, I don't know. This video should not be published. It, okay. But Friends and Family Christmas is not only the first lesbian holiday film by Hallmark, it's also Hallmark's first film where a lesbian romance sits at the centre of the story. And do you know what? It has better lesbian representation than all three seasons of the L Word Generation Q. Not that it's hard. Let's be real, a cereal box has better lesbian representation than the L Word Generation Q, it does. But I say all that to say, I'm impressed. And yes, I know it's Hallmark, but I said it before and I'll say it again. Lesbians deserve unrealistic surface level holiday romances too. Well, we want more stuff like The Holiday, not Love Actually. That's... no. Because Love Actually fills me with a homosexual visceral rage. Because it's garbage! Hi guys, welcome to a video, and in today's video I'm just going to be reviewing the 2023 film Friends and Family Christmas, which stars Ali Liebert, who has played many a sapphic character, including Betty and Bomb Girls many many moons ago, which I remember very well because I was a huge fan of that show, I was, and I wrote very questionable fan fiction about Betty and Kate. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it, it was a, it was a gay time. I shouldn't really bring my past fan fiction up on this channel because people go to find it, they do MI5 levels of research to get a hold of it, and it's not worth it. It's not worth your time or your energy. What I'm trying to say is I have a crush on Ali Lieber and I've had a crush on her for many years. Understandable. If you're not familiar with Friends and Family Christmas, it follows Amelia, a lawyer who is still recovering from a breakup, and artist Daniela, who takes on too much and hasn't made much room in her life for love. Pushed together on a blind date by their parents, the two embark on a ruse to convince their friends and families that they are dating, to take the heat off during the holidays. Ooh, it's the fake dating trope, give it to me. As a heads up, this video will contain spoilers, so if you've not seen this film, you have been warned. Now let's get into it. So this is Hallmark's first ever lesbian holiday film and I have to say, I really liked it. I think what caught me most off guard about this film is I wasn't expecting it to have such amazing lesbian representation, and it does. In fact, it has better lesbian representation than most other lesbian films that I've seen and uh, I've seen quite a lot. There's no pointless male love interest, lesbian relationships are normalised, they actually use the word lesbian, there's no trauma, no death, no homophobia. Both Amelia and Daniela's parents are completely fine about the fact that they're gay, and they're supportive, and there's a happy romantic ending. Like how often do all of those boxes get ticked in a lesbian film? It's like a rare shiny Pokemon card. And there's even a giant teddy bear which I really really want because it looks like it would solve all of the problems in my life. If I just could cuddle it, if I could just be near it, it would solve everything. It's also refreshing how it features older lesbian characters. I feel like a lot of the lesbian films that I've watched recently have really revolved around teenagers. And there's nothing wrong with lesbian coming of age films, I mean the more the merrier, it's just some of us are bitter and old and would also like representation. I also think it's really wonderful that 
younger lesbians and bisexual women get to watch this kind of film because I had nothing like this growing up and it's so heartwarming. It would have been nice, you know? Back in my day, it was either the L word or pornography. That, that's what it was. So it's nice that younger lesbians have something heartwarming to watch. Oh God. I mean, yes, it is a Hallmark film, so therefore it's Hallmark quality and it does follow a very predictable formula. But even still, it's very much a positive contribution to lesbian cinema and in some ways it's a landmark of lesbian cinema too. It's very cool. I'm also very impressed with just how many Christmas props they managed to cram into every single scene in this film. You will not forget that it's Christmas at any point during this film also help them God. Of course, it doesn't hurt that both Amelia and Daniela look like they've been crafted by Aphrodite herself. I especially appreciated Amelia wearing those high waist pants. And I felt like they had decent enough chemistry. I will say they do start off feeling slightly awkward and mismatched as a romantic pairing. Amelia is this uptight lawyer and Daniela is this go with the flow artist. But I think that's the whole point of the film and their relationship. And both actors do a good job of building upon the chemistry and attraction as the film progresses. I mean, there's yearning, there's intense eye contact, there's slow dancing, and there's a lot of tension. I mean, what more could you want in a lesbian film? Actually, I wanted them to kiss on that doorstep so, so badly. I was fully invested in them kissing in that scene. I was. But I will say, all of that build up throughout the film makes it so satisfying when they finally do kiss. I mean, the kisses are just... That's every lesbian's review of every lesbian film. I was also surprised at just how touching some of their scenes together were. For example, the scene where Amelia finds out that Daniela has won a travel grant and feels like she has to say goodbye to her is very emotionally charged. Both actors brought a certain depth and nuance into their more sensitive scenes together, which caught me off guard because it's a Hallmark movie. I wasn't expecting anything more than surface level. But because of that added rawness in Ali and Humberley's performances in their scenes together, the film certainly does go beyond two-dimensional, which was a pleasant surprise. As I've discussed earlier, this film has incredible lesbian representation, but I also felt like it was made specifically for the sapphic community. It contains several nods to lesbian culture and media. I mean, they mentioned Taylor Swift, there's a few visual parallels with the film Carol. There's astrology talk on their first date. They've placed small rainbow decorations in various scenes throughout the film too, which you can pick out like Easter eggs. And the narrative revolves around a fake dating trope, which is like lesbian glee fan fiction come to life. So not only does this film have positive lesbian representation, but you can really tell that it was made for a sapphic audience and you don't always get those two things in lesbian cinema which is another positive thing about the film, you know? I very much felt like the target audience for this film. I felt like it was communicating with me directly. It was speaking my language. The lesbian language of love and languish. Friends and Family Christmas also has a diverse range of characters from different backgrounds and ethnicities, but they're integrated into the film in a completely organic way. None of the characters felt like tokens, which was really refreshing to see and is another huge plus of the film. Take note, Generation Q. I don't really have any criticisms for the film because of the type of film that it is. What you see is very much what you get. I did not go into this film expecting some kind of vintage French lesbian cinema experience. If anything, the film exceeded my expectations, so I really don't have anything to complain about. The only thing that irked me slightly about the film, which I will mention, are the scenes where Amelia is at home lounging around in her pyjamas and she's wearing full makeup. What woman lounges around at home in full makeup and for what reason? It's so unrealistic and seeing that time and time again on screen promotes the idea that there's something wrong with women's bare faces and that they need to perform femininity at all times so that they're fit for the male gaze and consumption. It's very 1960s and it needs to die in a fire. 
fire. There's also a scene where it's Christmas morning and Amelia has just woken up and I'm fairly certain she woke up with fake lashes on in this scene. And that kind of thing always really grates on me when I see it in films, but again, it's a Hallmark movie, they probably operate on a tight schedule and wanted to save time by keeping the makeup on so they didn't have to keep taking it off and reapplying it. So what are you gonna do? Overall, Friends and Family Christmas is a cute, clean and heartwarming cake with an added layer of emotional depth frosting, which made it even more delicious than I was expecting. And for Hallmark's first ever lesbian holiday romance film, I thought it was a really good effort. Apology accepted for pulling that lesbian advert. Okay guys, if you've seen Friends and Family Christmas, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I hope you have a Merry Grinchmas or Happy Holidays or let's just pretend this whole season doesn't exist. Mus. <laughs> some of us are allergic to joy and by some of us I mean me. <laughs>